Well, hi there. How are you? Welcome to Mix It 3, everybody. Hi, welcome, welcome. Hey. Liv and Nat and some guests coming up and a lot of stuff happening today. I'm so excited for today's show. It's a jam-packed show. Yes. It's been a jam-packed day so far. Uh, right? Yes. Uh, and, and especially some stuff that we're planning for tomorrow's shows, Morning Mix and Mix It 3. So be sure that you tune in for that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you're in luck. Enjoy the weather this evening. It's only going to be 35. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for Saturday, yes. 16 degrees planned for Saturday night. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, batten down the hatches. Get the plants and especially the pets in. Uh, make sure that everything is set for that, all right? Yeah. Uh, yes, it is It is a special day. It's a very special day so today. Special Can day. you tell us why? Yes, and she only thought mm -hmm. I was going to talk about her in the morning. Uh, <laughs> she gets both shows today. Uh, happy birthday to Yay! my wife, Heidi. Heidi. Uh, we've been together. Uh, this is actually... 25 years? I think it's 26. Uh, it's 26. Yeah, 20, <laughs> like I said, 26 years. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, she's, uh, she, what did I write on Facebook? She's the most accident prone, Kansas City Chiefs obsessed, um, biggest Fanalo, biggest man, big, Mary, Barry Manilow fan that I know of. Uh, she's also the most gracious mom and most forgiving wife. So. Mm. And if you remember what we were talking about with the dishes yesterday, well, then you understand why. Happy birthday, honey. Happy Love birthday, you. Heidi. I, I hope you inspire her very much today. Not only today, all year. Well, because she deserves it. The day is like the day is getting late, so I've been at work all day. <laughs> now we're going we're going out to dinner tonight, so we'll have we'll have a good evening. And then we're going to uh, we're going to go to uh, see a show this Saturday. We'll check out check out yeah. Yacht Rock Radio at the at the pack. So that'll be fun. Y'all can grab a cup of coffee tonight. You can grab a cup of coffee. Speaking of. Because. That's right. And if I, <laughs> if I put my coffee down, we can stop and talk about this. For the coffee lovers, you can raise your mugs with us and you can celebrate the day because today is National Gourmet Coffee Day. So drinking gourmet coffee, it's not just about the taste. It's about the full experience, right? From the brewing process to the aroma and the flavor. Sipping on a cup of gourmet coffee can be a luxurious and relaxing moment in your day. That's right. So, and to talk about all things coffee, we have Monica Costa and Cesar Schettini joining us in the Mix Kitchen. Hey, Hi, guys. Hi. How's it going? Hello. 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 Good. <laughs> Thank How you. you? Yeah. Have coffee. We'll travel. <laughs> yeah, right. That's correct. Yeah, Gosh, yeah, yeah. I, I wish we could have a smell of vision. Right. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah. Oh my gosh, it smells it so good. There. Yes. <laughs> so okay. So first of all, yeah. what is a gourmet coffee? Well, we actually like to call it a specialty coffee. Gourmet is kind of like the day, right, to represent mm -hmm. and and celebrate coffee. But a specialty coffee is basically um, the love and quality that you that you take into consideration when you bring these beans all the way from the different countries throughout the roasting process, throughout the supply chain process, all the way to, you know, your cups here. So is it kind of like, uh, you can compare it to wine, you know, the grapes mm -hmm. from the vineyards and particular, particular beans, particular types, uh, that's what it is? That's what we're looking at? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. It's basically the respect and, and love for, for the process of good quality all the way, you know, from the vineyards to your cup, from you know, the feels to, to your bar, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, does it come in different flavors? Yes. Okay. So, you know, climate has a lot to do when it comes to flavor. You know, altitude and climate is, is very important when it comes to how much we can develop the flavor, not just for coffee, for, for a lot of other products, you know? The higher in altitude you can get without that product freezing, the better the flavor you're going to be able to accomplish. I've always wondered oh. that. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, so, it's like the more robust and uh, exactly str strong, the, mm -hmm. the stronger mm -hmm. the, the the higher north, the stronger the coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the place where you can really achieve that that uh, altitude without freezing is around your equatorial belt, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why places like you know Kenya or Ethiopia have been so successful pulling, you know, or pushing some very good and flavorful product. Mm -hmm. But now Ecuador is actually organizing their troops, you know, organizing the, their people. And we are also, you know, going through the same process of taking care of the people that's growing it, taking care of the people that's moving it, you know, throughout the supply chain and taking care of the people that's roasting it. And also, you know, making sure that we have the process very sharp so that way you can really taste the, the, the work of everybody. 
Oh, and mm -hmm. you can definitely taste it's right on yeah. the tip of your tongue. <laughs> How did you two, what sparked your interest in uh, getting into coffee? You want to start with your story? You can start. <laughs> well, you know, coffee in, in, my, in my life, uh, it's been always present, right? Even when I couldn't really have it, the aroma was always in the kitchen right. and in the living room and everything. You know, I, I grew up in Ecuador. All the coffee that we, that we work on right now is from Ecuador. So um, it's always been there, right? And, and my story has been about, like, understanding that I had a, a very good palate for it more than really understanding that I had a product that I can push out. So it was a lot of aha moments throughout my whole professional career when people will say, oh my God, this is so good. And I was just in my kitchen making coffee and I'd be like, mm, maybe I should do something with this. Maybe I should do something with this. Until it just, you know, when I, I met my fiance now. Uh -huh. right? Okay, congrats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, coffee Thank pulls you. people together. She, it does. Like, this is true. She tried it and she said, oh my God, like we have to, you know, we have to give it to the whole neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So that's when, you know, the whole, the whole idea started. Mm -hmm. So now did you two met over coffee? Literally? Kind we, of. Ki I mean, kind of, <laughs> sort of, yeah. Not exactly, but um, it's, cake. it's definitely been a, a connecting factor for us in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Monica, sure. tell us uh, what did y'all bring here today? So what we have here is a pour over. Um, these are Ecuadorian beans okay. um, that we've done with a hand poured cup of coffee. So mm -hmm. we've ground them up here for you fresh. Mm -hmm. um, we use very specific measurements with the beans and also with the water, with the timing, um, and that allows us to achieve really the, the optimal um, cup of coffee. And that varies based on the bean that we're using, those you mentioned wine, so those notes that we really want to come out mm -hmm. of the coffee bean. Mm -hmm. um, we it's a time science. that uh -huh. it is a science. Yeah, it's right. like working in a lab. Exactly. I can't remember, I can't remember when I've had, the last time I've had an optimum. Uh -huh. This is this is the one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one for sure. Now we also like made a lot of our all our alternative milks and all our syrups in in the shop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is one of our syrups. We use something that's called panela, which is the dehydrated sugar cane juice that we cook it into a syrup. Mm -hmm. You guys, you guys like your coffee sweet or not? I just uh, want to know. I, so that I, way. I, I, you know what? I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Sweet. Okay, yeah. let's Bring go. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add some I'll of this panela when. that we make. <laughs> You know, panela in Portuguese is pan. <laughs> pan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We also have that in our shop. A lot mm -hmm. of pan. Okay. A lot of bread, yeah. <laughs> All right, so it we're going to. so good. We're going to mix it up here. You're going to like it a little closer there? Mm. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Good. Yeah. It sucks yeah. to be the people that are watching us. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here you go. We're going to do ladies first. Thank this is for you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. These are little cortado cups. Here oh, you go. thank you very much. You yeah. Thank you. Here you go, my friend. So now, uh, you said you grew up with this. Did, yeah. did you go to classes as well, or was this all just learn from... Well, learn from the family? You know, my, my grandmother used to roast her own coffee beans. In her little, cheers, cheers, you know, shop. Cheers. She used to have a shop. Cheers. Happy coffee day. Happy Thank you. Happy coffee. coffee. Cheers. Mm. Oh lord. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's and a delight. I, and, a, a, and I thought that Brazil a had a good coffee. <laughs> It's a delight. Wow, and why you Nagasta? That's awesome. I'm jacked up now. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Well, Very yummy. So, and the hour starts at three. Uh, yeah, well, I, grew up, I grew up watching my mom, my grandma, you know, roast her own coffee. Right. Along with fava beans, she used to throw a lot of uh, orange peel, cinnamon into the mix. Uh, as soon as she used to finish roasting it, my grandfather used to put middle, just kind of grind really? that, you know, wow. one of those grinders that used to just attach to the table and oh, wow. just go at it. That is so cool. So, you know, like. So a, coffee has been in your life yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah. It's been always there. It's, it's just, I, I just wasn't connecting it as always as something that I could. Like mm. really show everybody else mm -hmm. and, and talk mm -hmm. about or be the face of, you know. So happy to show everybody else right now. Watching, uh, <laughs> National yeah. Gourmet Delicious. Coffee Day. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming here. Thank, thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much. I'm yeah. glad you guys you. like it. Mm. Oh, yeah. I love it. This is delicious. We got any more left? <laughs> okay, we we'll, drank it all. We'll be back after we make another batch here. Coming up, uh, ladies, if you're tired of taking your vehicle to somewhere for basic service, when you can do it yourself? Well, yes, I am. Okay, good. <laughs> she read that well. Uh, well, a local business is hosting a car care clinic where you can learn the tools of the trade. Or mix it three on the way. Coming up.
Well, one of the most common things YouTube now by women is how to take care of your car. Well, here's another way to do it hands-on so if you know when you get it right the first time. That's right. That's why Wayne's Automotive Center in Aiken, they're continuing their annual Heels on Wheels Car Care Clinic. Co-owner Sherry Corbett and acquisition asset executive Constant Woodard from Wayne's stopped by to tell us some more. Ladies, thanks for joining us here today. Appreciate it very much. Very, very cool event that's going to be happening near this car care clinic. Uh, it's a great thought. It's a great presentation. How did this come about? Um, well, a lot of times in the automotive industry, it can be um, very intimidating for a female, um, yes. mostly because <laughs> you don't know the key language to use or your just lack of knowledge about your vehicle. So we wanted to create an event to have a safe space for females to come and ask questions um, about their personal vehicles, maintenance, repairs, and just to help them be well equipped with knowledge. This is for me. Oh, yeah. This is so for me. <laughs> it's for me, too. I mean. <laughs> so uh, your annual event is coming up on Saturday the 27th, right? So tell us how this is going to play out. Yeah, so um, the way that it works is that we break out into five different stations for the ladies to be able to learn all different things. Um, and the stations range from fluids to visibility, battery safety, tire safety, as well as service engine lights. So that way we're able to give them kind of a well-rounded amount of knowledge for them to be able to have um, everything whenever they go to see their own mechanics. All right, so now this is called Heels on Wheels. It's geared toward women, uh, but anybody can attend, correct? Absolutely, anybody that's more interested in learning about the basics of their vehicle is welcome to attend. Okay, so in addition to the car um, care information, there is a lot of more happening at Wayne's that, that day, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, on the day of, aside from the clinic, we also have a quick breakfast for the ladies. Um, but then we also, in the middle, we also serve them lunch. Um, and then at the end, uh, we have another recap session, a uh, Q&A session with um, the mechanics, just in case uh, any of the attendees didn't have the opportunity to ask the, their full amount of questions. And then also um, in that, we have some other female-friendly vendors that come out um, to be with the ladies and have them something else to do as well as some other promotional products that we give out to them. Every attendee receives a t-shirt um, as well as some other nice gifts. All right, a fun day and all the events that are happening here. Sherry, you're co-owner of the uh, Wayne's Automotive Center and you've, you've been doing this now for a number of years. How has the reaction been uh, from the participation? Have you seen like repeat performers? Yes, we do have repeat um, ladies that come back. They, you know, interact and say that they've learned something new each time. We have groups of ladies, that church groups that will come, you know, just single groups that will come together. Um, so it's a very informative event. So we see repeat attendees. Good thing, good thing. All right, let's uh, recap the info. Let's uh, talk about again when and where that's gonna be happening. Yeah, so um, it's going to be January 27th. It's a Saturday. Um, it's going to be at Wayne's Automotive and Towing Center in Aiken. It's at 1997 Richland Avenue East. All right. There you go. Saturday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Check it out. A lot of stuff happening. And uh, get your gear on. All right. Ladies, thanks for joining us. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Time to break out your captain's hats now when Mix It 3 returns. It's a trip to the golden era of soft rock with the band Yacht Rock Review. They're heading to Columbia County Performing Arts Center this Saturday, and you don't want to miss this. That's coming up next here on Mix at 3.
All right, you can embark on a nostalgic voyage through the shimmering seas of music with Yacht Rock Review, wow. the ultimate purveyors <laughs> of the smooth Yacht Rock sound, and who many consider the keepers of the Yacht Rock fire. That's the full first sentence on Yacht Rock Review's website. And it, I tell you what, it's all true. And I love it. All right, so Yacht Rock Review is coming to the Columbia County Performing Arts Center this Saturday, oh, yes, this Saturday night. And uh, Cliff spoke with the singer and guitarist of the group to see why Yacht Rock is everyone's dirty little secret. All right, we are joined by vocalists, guitarists, keyboardists, percussionists, a lot of the band right there for you in front of you uh, for Yacht Rock Review. Nick Nespajani, thanks for joining us here. It's your pleasure. Absolutely, buddy. Uh, listen, I, I've seen you guys before. We'll get to that in a minute because it's absolutely amazing. And before we delve into this whole history of the band, because it's such a unique thing, uh, let's talk about this sultry and mysterious format people know as Yacht Rock Radio. How do you even classify a song in that format? You know, a lot of people would classify Yacht Rock as the smooth music of the late 70s and early 80s made in Southern California by session musicians, blah, blah, blah. But to me, Yacht Rock is more of a vibe. It's how you make people feel. If I make you feel like you're Ted Turner in 1980 on that yacht about to win America's Cup, <laughs> yeah. that is Yacht Rock to me. All right. So uh, where do you and the rest of the band come from in this? How do you guys come into the scene here of Yacht Rock Radio? Because that's not how you began. It's, you know, it was kind of, uh, we slid in sideways. We were all off, you know, we had gone through our 20s, tried to become indie rock musicians, never quite made it. And we were all, we all had different jobs, you know, painting houses or going to law school or whatever. And then we did this 70s AM gold show that we named Yacht Rock at the last minute and it sold out. And next thing you know, we're all quitting our jobs in school and buying vans and starting a new business, you know? And uh, getting the haircuts, too, for it. That's exactly right. <laughs> or not getting haircuts. Not getting haircuts. Yes, I stand corrected. Uh, you guys have been doing this now since, what, 07. Uh, and your bandmates come from all different types of musical influences. What, what do you think it is about Yacht Rock that makes it everybody's guilty little pleasure? Well, it's got two things. First of all, the, the songs themselves, the song craft is is so intentional and so perfect. Like these are some of the best written songs you're going to find. And it's not trying to make any big statements. You know, it's it's pop. It's light. It's fluffy. But underneath it, there is this musical complexity and intensity that people who love uh, metal music can totally get down with Steely Dan because of the precision. You know, it, it, it has a, a very wide appeal in that regard. Now, I, I got the opportunity to see your band open up for Kenny Loggins, uh, the final tour this summer in your hometown, uh, by the way. First of all, it was amazing. Uh, but I was really pleasantly surprised to see there were so many there uh, of all ages. So what kind of uh, what kind of audience are you are you guys playing to lately? We're cool with the parents, cool with the friends. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we, uh, it, it's really neat the way this music has started to identify for the younger generation, too. And you hear it in music that's being made today, whether it's, you know, a new song by Dua Lipa or Tame Impala or whoever, you hear those yacht rock influences coming through in that music. And I think that's what connects us to the younger generation. Also, there just aren't that many big shows that present musicality at this high a level. And I think, you know, even if you're a kid and you aren't into this music, you see something like us and you're like, whoa, I've not seen it done like that before, you know? And you've got a pretty large band, actually. I mean, you're ranging anywhere between, what, seven and ten members? Uh, we have we have ten members, but the drummer is a platoon situation. It's like a catcher on a baseball team. You know, we switch them out every other game kind of vibe. But so we have always nine people on stage. It's a big band. All right, get the player du jour. Okay, so so many songs that you're performing here, and I mean, we can we can talk about some of the artists here. Of course, you've got Toto. Uh, a lot of people think that's like right up there. Christopher Cross, Kenny Loggins, of course. Uh, my favorite, personally, Jerry Rafferty. Love Baker Street. Uh, you guys do an amazing version of that. Have any of the original bands or artists commented on your performances of their music? Oh, yeah. I mean, all the time. And, you know, we've not only had you know, talk to these guys about it, but we've had them sit in, you know, like 
the guy who sang Brandy, you're a fine girl has played that song with us, you know, a couple dozen times, you know, Robbie Dupree, Gary Wright, rest in peace. Like so many of these guys have come and sat in with us. So we've, we've gotten lessons straight from the source when it comes to the Yacht Rock. Well, I can guarantee you, and I can speak for everybody here, it's going to be a real treat when you guys get here to the Columbia County Performing Arts Center. Again, that show is going to be on the 20th, and tickets are available at Ticketmaster.com. Do not miss Yacht Rock Review. Nick, thanks for spending some time with us. Uh, we can't wait to see you on stage. My pleasure. Stay smooth out there, people. You heard from him. <laughs> All right, coming up, the debate is back, and so is the ranch. We'll talk about more about this. Breath a quick break. Okay, so people will either love or hate this. <laughs> We're talking about Burt's Bees new lip balm, which has the flavor of ranch dressing. Yeah, I said that. Because why not? Because why not? So Burt's Bees and Hidden Valley Ranch are teaming up for a whole line of lip balms featuring the flavors you would think in a basket of chicken wings. Yeah, of course. Chicken wings, <laughs> ice cream. Now, lip balm, too. Yeah. Now, they have more flavors. The flavors include Hidden Rally Ranch, uh, Ranch, of course, buffalo sauce, crunchy celery, and fresh carrot. Uh, the collaboration started as a joke a couple of years ago when fans went wild over an April Fool's post on social media. Burt's says the line is only available while supplies last. I tell you, <laughs> uh, these are going to sell out like hotcakes. If it depended on me, it, it was gonna last for a long time. You get the you get the <laughs> feel of eating all the chicken wings without the calories. No, thank so, you. I'm not buying this. I'm not trying it. No, you, you remember last year for the uh, with the uh, ranch ice cream. Yeah, the ranch ice cream. You loved it. I, I did. I I actually liked it. I wish they still had it. I almost so gagged. <laughs> You gagged, so uh, I believe, <laughs> three quarters of the television station here uh, gagged. It was so bad. So why do I need a lip balm with a ranch dressing flavor on my lips? No, thank you. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you like eating chicken wings and you like dipping in the ranch all the time. Wipe your lips yeah. and take the flavor out of your mouth. No, thank you. I don't no, need that. Like to said. stick there forever. You can you can have the the comfort and the feeling of eating wings without all the calories. Just put on the uh, our buffalo sauce uh, and the uh, ranch and uh, a carrot. The carrot is the one thing that doesn't stick in with hey, this. Heidi, I, I got celery, ask you carrots, that. buffalo sauce, and ranch. Okay, why not? <laughs> One for each, uh, one for almost each day of the week, folks. Hey, uh, thanks for joining us here today, everybody. Investigate TV Plus coming up next. All right, thanks for watching.